celebration. French vanilla shot. That's what I'm talking about. It's hot today. Almost 30. It's a heat wave. We got, you know I got those lovely hash browns. And we got the little sausage, egg, and cheese tacos. Got two of them. Nice little snack. Like a tortilla. I don't know. It's a little bit like toasted. It's all about that processed cheese. So, made out pretty good on that van. The, uh, the cat was worth more than I thought. Which was a good thing. Those are pretty good anyway, but it's just, um, it's like right up on that manifold that comes down. It's a real pain to get to, and uh, never mind trying to get the bolts out. You don't want to struggle with that to actually unbolt it, so. That guy's doing this thing now where he'll cut him off there. He'll have his guy cut him off. Ten bucks. But I swear, I don't even think they end up charging me the ten in the end. I just can't get it high enough in the air to get those ones off. And, uh... You know, it's one thing if it's hanging right down under the car. Reach up with the sawzall and cut it off. I'm able to uh, either leave it on the trailer and get under there or, you know, just uh, put it on the ramps. But you got to be able to get it up in the air and get those tricky ones off. And Of course, that guy does them all the time. So he had his own little tricks of, you know, tricks of the trade and... He likes doing it. He's having fun. He's working. I would too if I had that, if I was working at that place. Pick it up with a machine, put it on the rack, get nice and high, and be able to get right up under there. Well, for $10, it's kind of a no brainer for me. I'm going to use two Sawzall blades maybe getting the thing off and plus when I blow them up it stays quieter and cut the cat off and then you know you're revving it up it's kind of loud for the neighborhood speaking of that Last video, snowmobiles right on the dry pavement. I never knew you could you could use them on the dry pavement, but they do. I guess they got special 
these days the tracks are they don't worn down you know wear down so quick but um so a little scary I gotta admit I got a little scared on that one you know I got no one else out there I got the GoPro outside looking at the engine I'm inside the van and uh, I don't know what's going on but you see in the video it kind of like lit on fire Ooh, it double kind of old today so the fire started and on those V6s they turn sideways and the valve cover in the back that you can't see they always leak oil nobody ever changes it because so hard to get to so I think that there was a lot of oil back there probably got onto the exhaust manifold but you can see how good the transmission was somebody said oh it's just low on oil no it took me what uh, a couple of neutral drops back and forth and reverse was totally gone blew it transmission was blown so why I did that was on purpose kind of because I'm only getting a three grand tack you know rev limiter I'm never gonna kill an engine like that so by getting the leaving it in reverse and having no reverse you gave me a higher RPM higher red line I think it was like over six grand so that was a little better but started getting hot and you can see the fires sort of started now the weird thing is if you notice in the video you might have to go back and watch if you weren't paying attention you can see like this little squirt of coming out and you know what I forgot before I dropped it off I was gonna look to see what that line was myself but it was um, sort of a I don't know whether it was fuel I mean it looked like fuel but if it was fuel it was sort of like almost like it was trying to extinguish itself out the fire was coming the flames and then the squirt was like squirting right at it and uh, if that was fuel I mean you would have had I think that you know if you squirt fuel in an open fire I mean you're gonna notice you know it's gonna be like oof, you know but it could have been coolant I guess it was either fuel or coolant and uh, it's kind of funny how that decided to come out like that it was almost like it was trying to put itself out trying to tell me it's on fire but uh, I had no idea I was in there revving away I see smoke but you know that's normal I mean the thing's got 277,000 there's a lot of shit on the engine it's gonna smoke but just when the flames got real high it's almost like I could hear that sound like it's hard to explain like that kind of like there was something going on something might have lit on fire but I wasn't too sure and it was almost dead too it was like wrapping pretty good and I was losing RPMs but I had a feeling and I had to get out and look at that and as you've seen it was a pretty good fire that was that was pretty big and uh, what it did the bad thing was that it lit all that like black insulation 
kind of like clothy stuff, whatever that is, on the firewall. It lit all that on fire, and uh, that stuff smoldered for hours. I couldn't get it to go out. <clears throat> you see, my little fire extinguisher, um, that was brand new. Uh, that was in my, uh, that was in the RV for an emergency, and uh, that didn't last long. It didn't really do much, and then I started throwing snow, and uh, I don't really know why I moved the tripod out of the way. I think I was more thinking in my mind that I was going to have to try to uh, get the van out of the garage, you know, so that it didn't light the whole garage on fire. And uh, right, right in front of it, the Raider was parked right there, but the battery was unhooked, and it would have taken me some time, you know, pop the hood on that, fire it up, and go get a fuck, you know, a chain or, you know, something, hook it to it, pull it out of there while it's still on fire. I decided not to do that, so I, I tried, I pushed it a couple of feet so that it was like the nose was out of the garage at least and uh the flames didn't get high enough to do any damage there but i ended up running inside i was yelling i was actually screaming and yelling because my my uh wife and daughter were in there and they couldn't hear me so i ran inside and started yelling and i said i need water and i need a lot of it because everything's off outside you know for winter time there's no hose no nothing no water outside at all so they started filling like cooking pots and bringing them out to me one at one by one and it took a lot of those i'd say probably at least 15 full pots of water i just kept on dumping it down there but it's hard to see and then uh like i said That stuff, just steady smoke was coming out from, from under there. It was a little bit scary. I had to, I had to babysit it for a few hours. I just kept on. I had like a spray bottle with water, and I kept on squirting it in there, and uh, you know, wetting down all that insulation. And but hey, made for a good video. But there was some panic. Definitely was some panic there. It's uh, one neighbor next door there, the closest one. That guy's a old truck driver. He's deaf as a doornail, so he can't hear anything. So I thought for a while he was ignoring me. So I was trying to say hi to him and stuff, you know, outside, and come to find out his, uh, his girlfriend said, nah, he can't hear, he can't hear nothing, so, don't know, he probably didn't even know what was going on, but, we got it out. As you can see, I decided to uh, keep those tires off the van because once the ice and snow kind of melted off of them and I started looking at them, they really are brand new. They're really nice tires, actually. The two fronts are good years, very expensive. The backs are something else, but I mean they're all the same size. And the tread, like I said, is like new. So up here, people are crazy about tires. You got to mess around a little bit and be willing to uh, deal with you know the crap that to sell them on marketplace and stuff but a lot of dodge caravans going around 
a lot of people have them in town so someone might be able to bolt them right on and be all set or uh, the tire is a pretty uh, common size for a lot of different vehicles so they could always uh, you know have the tire swapped over but you can't expect much out of them you know to sell stuff up here you gotta you gotta price stuff really cheap probably be lucky to get a hundred bucks which I mean tires are expensive you go to buy them hundred dollars you've got a van you're driving around and the tires are junk hundred bucks you bolt them right on you're all set so that would be a pretty good deal Not a bad Saturday. Made some good profit. Took a ride. About 85 miles. One way. But. The guy pays well. Way more than I get anywhere else. <laughs> 